On today's program, Reverend Adam Gabelli and Gilad Rosinger discuss prophetic happenings in the land of Israel. ICEJ Canada Executive Director Donna Holbrook speaks with the owners of Galilee Green, an olive oil producer in the Galilee. And Reverend Adam Gabelli has insights into living in Israel. Gilad, what a powerful testimony. Just thank you so much for sharing it with us. Uh, God's moving in this land, you know, as we heard with your testimony, He's moving in your life, but He's doing it all over this land. And from this land, the, the nations are being blessed. Amen. Tell us a little bit about what you're involved in right now, uh, here in the Galilee, and of course, through the country, um, in, in blessing the nations, in, in just seeing God's Spirit be poured out. I want to hear a little bit about that. Well, thanks, thanks for asking. I mean, it's such a privilege to be here. Um, you know, uh, the Lord called my wife and I up to the Galilee, uh, specifically uh, almost six years ago. And uh, ever since we've been here, uh, we have watched prophecy mm. come to life. Hallelujah. We've watched the promises of the Lord come to pass. When we first moved up here, um, it didn't seem like there was too much going on, mm. really. And there were times where we even questioned, you know, should, I be here? should we be here? Um, and there were a, there was a lot of opposition. There was a lot of spiritual warfare. Um, we had some near death experiences, wow. uh, even up here. And uh, it was really clear the enemy did not want us here. But uh, the Lord's plans are bigger. And uh, you know, one of my friends, Chaim, uh, he was like the only person, the only friend we had up here in the beginning. Yeah. And we used to we used to pray together and and joke like you know why did you bring us to this dry dry parched land yeah. you know, <laughs> and uh, but but we the Lord gave us a promise and a vision. He said, uh, if you'll just continue in this, I'm going to do a new thing. And uh, so we prayed and believed. And man, looking back now over the last five years, it is incredible to see what the Lord is doing here. Um, you know, he brought so many people, uh, Jordan, Joshua, uh, so many incredible believers uh, that are that are doing big things for the kingdom here. And um, and so we're, we're just so excited to be a part of what God is doing in this hour. And we're just a small part of what he's doing, um, but it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of it. Uh, my wife and I uh, own a tour company called uh, Radiant Israel Tours. Mm -hmm. It's part of uh, Radiant Group, um, which really the heart of it, it's, it, it was founded on a foundation of giving and blessing others. Mm -hmm. So we wanted, we wanted to be a blessing to the local believers and local organizations, nonprofit organizations, um, and new people that were making Aliyah, that were being called to the region. We felt like if we could be a blessing to the people who are coming to support Israel, the people who are visiting from uh, North America, or from around the world, that wanted to do tours, um, the Lord spoke to us and he said, I want you not to just you know, show them the land, but I want them to discover my people. And what I'm doing here in this hour. So and so we designed uh, the tours in a way that every tour that would come and every person that would come, they would get to see what the Lord is doing in this hour, but they would also come and get to volunteer, wow. uh, like with the Beautiful Land Initiative, volunteer with you know, Aliyah Return Center, volunteer with uh, all these different organizations that were coming. And even financially, we wanted to be a blessing. So uh, just by uh, the tours coming to Israel, we tithed and blessed a portion of the proceeds uh, yeah. to some of these believers and, you know, just to help uh, okay. facilitate what God yeah. was doing. And we realized that by doing this, it was actually this kingdom principle that was sowing into the land and the people themselves just by coming on these tours were actually blessing the land and the people and then they in return were being blessed richly uh, for doing that and so it actually evolved um, the Lord taught us along the way where we kind of started as, as a tour company, but really it's grown so much bigger than that. Um, we bless Holocaust survivors and um, we just love to facilitate volunteer experiences, uh, worship gatherings, prayer meetings, and to really uh, connect the people with what the Lord is doing in this hour. Amen. Praise God. Now, there, there is this growing movement of Messianic believers all across the land. Uh, you mentioned when your parents first came a generation ago, there was hardly any. 
uh, what, what's the body of Messiah like now, today in the land? Well, it's very encouraging. I can tell you that um, just like it is in the rest of the world, um, there's turmoil, there's challenges, there's division. There's all kinds of things that are happening in the world, and it's the same in the body. Um, you know, I, I personally believe that we're in a, a 1 Peter 4.17 hmm. moment where it says, um, you know, the time has come for the righteous judgment to begin, and if it begins uh, in the household of the Lord, what will it mean uh, for the rest of the world? And right. so I believe we're seeing some of that, um, and so we're in, we're in challenging times. But the encouraging thing that I see is really, I believe, even more so uh, you know, judgment and deliverance come hand in hand, mm -hmm. as we know historically. When the Lord moves, it's not just judgment, it's His righteous judgment, and it's, it's to produce mercy and love and blessing. Right. He does it uh, to produce holiness and restoration, revival and awakening. Right. And so I believe we're in a Isaiah 60 moment, mm -hmm. which is arise, shine, for your light has yes. come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yeah. For although darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people on you, Adonai will rise and over you will be seen as glory. Nations will come towards your light and kings towards your shining splendor. Raise your eyes and look around. They are all assembling and coming to you. Yeah. And I really believe that we are right now as darkness covers the earth, as challenges and problems and oppression on the body of Messiah and the real remnant of the Lord, the glory of Adonai is going to rise, and this is going to be our greatest, greatest hour. I really believe it with all my heart. And I think, what is your opinion on, and I've had a lot of believers come to me and ask, oh, have you heard of the Kaduri prophecies? Have you heard of this? There's this Orthodox rabbi who who is said to have kind of had an encounter with Yeshua. Can you expand a little bit on that? What, what are your thoughts as a believer here in the land, as a Jewish believer in the land? What are some of your thoughts on that? The man, the myth, the legend. Right. Um, it's a very interesting story. Uh, we're very familiar with it. And even before this prophecy came forth or the reports about the prophecy that he gave, um, that there would be... Uh, they asked him, when would be the coming of, of the Messiah? When would the Mashiach be drawing near? And he gave a response like, when there will be uh, elections but no government. Right. This is uh, the news story that's been reported, and this is what we're reading, and it's fascinating. Specifically, wasn't it even he, he declared the year, the Jewish calendar year, I, 780? It's very possible. I don't remember yeah. reading that part. Uh, if you're saying it, then I'm I, sure I it's correct. It I believe 5780, so, and we're right in that year right now. Well, one of the things that I read that's fascinating uh, he said that it would be between two Benjamins. Two Bennies, yeah. And you have Benny Gantz and, and Bibi, Benjamin Netanyahu. So yeah. you have two Benjamins. Um, hmm. So it's a fascinating story if it's accurately reported, yeah. which many believe that it is. Um, that it, you know, we got to wonder, we got to ask, and we have to pay attention. Hmm. One of the things that makes it even more um, incredible to think about was the accurate report that he is the rabbi that found Messiah. There's a movie about it. Right, yeah. And uh, he left this note with the uh, acronym uh, of Yeshua. Right. You know, uh, these Kabbalists and rabbis, they often uh, write and communicate in code. Right. Um, and they're, you know, really into the things like Gematria. But um, yes, he left the identity of the Messiah as Yeshua. Mm. And... Uh, he gave instruction to only open that a year after after he passed away. Correct. Correct. It's amazing to see, and and Yeshua is revealing himself to all, like from the secular to the ultra ultra orthodox. We're we're hearing reports, right? We're hearing reports of of them coming to the knowledge of Messiah, and he's there's things happening unprecedented in this land. Um, is there any final thoughts that you would have? for Canadian believers who are watching, uh, who are praying right now for Israel. Absolutely. Well, first of all, we're very grateful for your prayers. Uh, we need it. We're together in this and we need your support. This is about mm -hmm. the one new man. We're a global body of Messiah. Right. And, uh, and we need to stand together in these hours. I would say that uh, really it's a plumb line, I believe that the Lord is drawing in this hour and he's always used Israel and the Jewish people mm -hmm. Um, as kind of a defining factor yeah. of where we stand, 
with him. It's like the timepiece, it's got it's, time. It's God's prophetic timepiece. And it's also uh, really a, a definition of, are we gonna stand with God? Are we gonna stand with what he loves? Are we gonna stand for the Bible and the biblical truth? Or are we gonna go the other way? And I think we're in a time and an hour where the gray area is disappearing. Right. And you know, the Lord has called us uh, to really be on fire for him and to be serious about our walk with him, with him, to come up higher. You know, he gave me this verse recently yeah. um, from Revelation 4.1. Right. It says, after this, I looked and behold, a door uh, stands open in heaven. And I heard a voice saying, come up here and I will show you what must happen yeah. after this. You're so right. Um, and I, I love watching your messages, by the way. Okay, you're you. really in tune with the spirit and I'm just so blessed by the way the Lord is using you um, in this hour. But I just, I agree with you in where we are right now. And I, I would just encourage everyone, there's nothing more important than our intimacy with the Lord. There's nothing yeah. more, more important than getting right with Yeshua and, and really getting passionate about the things that he's passionate about. Um, because everything that is not built on solid foundation is gonna come crashing to the ground and he is going to uh, establish his true end time remnant in this hour. And so now's the time really to stand with the Jewish people, uh, to pray together and to really seek how can we advance his kingdom. Amen, praise God. Up next, Donna Holbrook speaks with the owners of Galilee Green, an olive oil producer in the Galilee. I'm in the Galilee at Yefna El with my dear friend Neely Abraham and my other friend Shamil Veffer. And these two people are from Toronto and they have established Galilee Green Olive Oil. Yep. And would you tell us about what is Galilee Green? How did that come to be? We're fortunate enough to live up here in the Galilee and this is agricultural country and it's uh, just fabulously rich and we see here in the backyard here, Neely and Arnie's backyard, all the beautiful fruits. And uh, a few years ago, during olive harvest time, we decided to just join the community in the local harvest. And we made, we picked the olives and we went down to the, uh, the olive press and we built, we made our own oil and it was unbelievable. And uh, our two families both have backgrounds in marketing. And mm -hmm. we said, let's do something with this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, see if we can share the blessings that we have here uh, every day of our lives and see if we can share it with the people all around the world who love and support Israel. Now, you have a wide outreach, I believe, with your Galilee Green. I, you have it, you're on Facebook. Just, <laughs> just search Galilee Green and you'll see a map right of the places that you have actually marketed to yeah so we have um customers now in new zealand and in germany and uh holland and america of course canada um where else italy yeah the italians prefer the oh, yeah the exactly oh, that one? interesting yeah and what did they say why how is it different from i mean well we're biased ours is better, better. <laughs> We have what? the secret ingredient, yeah. the holiness of the land. It's being nurtured by the holiness of the land of yeah. Israel our olive oil. Makes now, a big difference. All of all that's mass marketed won't have a taste, won't have a smell, right? Right. What should people look for in a good olive oil? So the secret to the good olive oil is how quickly it goes from the tree mm. into the press and comes out into the olive oil and uh, that'll determine the acidity level and what determines extra virgin olive oil. There's so much competition in the world today for olive oil that, and there's a lot of money to be made, that people are trying to find ways to keep the prices down right. to the end consumer. And there was just recently a number of uh, exposés, in particular uh, Italian olive oil, 60 Minutes just did a, a, mm, a piece okay. this past Sunday, or this recently. Oh. And uh, they, uh, they're showing that there you can add different olive oils to it. Oh, Maybe color. it's not necessarily extra virgin. Some of it's extra virgin. They mixed olive oil that was sitting around the olives in it for a and few days. And this is just to lessen the price. Exactly. But you're not getting what, you're, what the label is exactly. saying. Right. Exactly. And if you, don't, if you don't appreciate what real authentic good olive oil that's picked from the tree, made immediately into it, and it's a particular variety, mm 
then you won't really recognize the difference. You don't know what you're missing until you try the real authentic quality product. So when people taste our olive oil, uh, and ours is a particular blend of three different varieties to make it a, um, a very fragrant and a light, light flavor. Many olive oils are very harsh and they have a bitter aftertaste in your throat, which I kind of like, mm -hmm. but most people mm -hmm. have to develop a taste for that. So uh, we have this unique sweetness, uh, delicate flavor to our olive oil that works in baking, you know, from baking brownies to use it as a dip for your bread on a Friday night Would meal. Would you use it for frying as well? I use it for frying. Um, so not there, deep no, frying though. There's no, oh, other than deep frying. Deep frying and there's yeah. no limit to the range of what your Galilee green olive oil can Absolutely do. Absolutely <laughs> not. We just had lunch here and it was phenomenal. And olive oil through the, all your dishes, it was amazing. Thank you. It's very healthy too, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there are a lot of studies that are coming out that uh, just a tablespoon a day will really help prevent cholesterol, depression. Um, I don't want to go so far as saying cancer, but mm -hmm. it's an overall mm -hmm. tonic mm -hmm. for good health. Right. That we just you're lubricating your right your whole system. Right, Ashmil, you're saying that all olives start from green and wind up black. Right, right. They go through a stage also of purple. That right? Well, they, they go from a green and then a little bit mauvey color turning to purple and deep purple, almost black. That people will say that's a black olive. Actually, we have some over there. We can maybe bring them and show okay. it. But uh, yeah, every olive makes that transition, but they ripen on the tree at different times. So when season comes to pick, now this is very late. The season's finished. And if right. you take a look at the tree behind us, it's all black olives on mm. that tree. Mm -hmm. But when it's picking time right after Sukkot uh, in the fall, October time, November, mm -hmm. uh, you have to come in and pick the entire tree because you have to get the harvest direct to the press in the same, within, within hours, ideally. Within and hours. therefore, yeah. yeah, exactly, within hours. And then you're getting a mixture of green and uh, purple olives usually at that right. point. And then you can also expand what you're doing with the olive oil. Are you thinking of maybe branching out to soaps other and soaps? So there's some na very natural things that you can do. Right. So okay. we've considered it and uh, we have some thoughts about it. But again, it's very complicated to make it economic to be able to send Mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. halfway around the world mm -hmm. and keep the price competitive. Right now, if you buy uh, uh, a gift set, a tin mm -hmm. of olive oil right. and the decanter, right. if you I buy it, it directly from Israel, the right. Galilee, yeah. we'll ship it to you in Alaska, wherever you are, right. and the price will be cheaper than if you bought the local Californian olive okay. oil delivered. So. We have to be able to do that. So when we were going to come to alternative mm -hmm. products, it's a business decision because if we can't make it a viable, we're not looking for charity. We want right, to provide right, right. value exactly. for your dollar. Exactly. So therefore, for us to be able to compete, we have to consider the extra shipping costs that we have right. here in order to, to be competitive. But to one of your members, or uh, you, you ship every few months? Right. So the way, right, we And then you give recipes. Correct. We do every yes. week, two, three times a week sometimes. So depending. they get the decanter and they get the can and the can will fill that decanter more than twice. Well, one, twice. twice. Yeah. And then um, 90 days you later, 90 you get another day later, refill. Yeah, you get another one to yeah. your door. It's right. fabulous. Thank right. you. And your shipping's much better than our shipping. <laughs> And then if you go to Facebook, you'll see Neely with her friend Hannah, uh, Schmiel's wife, cooking in the kitchen. We are, yeah, we are cooking in the kitchen and we like to show the world how to cook Israeli and how to cook yes. healthy. Yes. Yeah, so we, we, pick, we pick recipes that are fun to make, right. tasty, wholesome, and also Israeli because that's what we're here. We're in Israel. And right. Right. Galilee Green's much more than olive oil. We're here to give people a personal connection with the people, the place, and the bounty of Israel. Mm -hmm. Because so many people come to visit Israel and they feel this emotional connection, but how many people are able yeah, to come into an Israeli home? I know. And so what special. we want to do is we want to invite people into our homes where the Jewish people, we've come back after 2,000 years to the land. The land's brought forth its fruits, yeah. 
for here. We, you know, we're living a, a prophecy come true. We are part of it. We're sensitive and we realize that. And it's a huge blessing and it's a huge, what we would say, Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's mm -hmm. name mm -hmm. to invite people in to see what's happening here Wonderful. with the Jewish people and what the blessing and the bounty that we have. So we invite them to experience the place and the people and, and, and bring some of that blessing into their home in the form of the olive oil and, and join us in cooking and preparing the foods and feeling like one big family. We call it the Galilee Green family. Up next, Reverend Adam Gabelli has insights into living in Israel. I'm here in the Galilee, just at the point that the Sea of Galilee goes into the Jordan Valley in one of the most fertile places in all of Israel. And we're in the middle of a banana grove. Literally, bananas are growing here by the millions and billions here in Israel. And why did I want to show you this place? Well, basically to show the miracle of the modern state of Israel. Remember, this area 100 years ago was derelict. It was desolate. There was no one here. There was, yes, of course, maybe dates growing in the Jordan Valley and so forth, some olive trees. But other than that, not to the scale that we see today of great uh, production of fruit, not just from this area because bananas are not originally from the Holy Land, but from all over the world. Bananas, mangoes, kiwis, things that you'd find all around the world are now grown here in Israel. Israel is a totally self-sufficient country and it is a miracle to see the, we the yields that they get here in the Holy Land as this is a land that is blessed by God because now the Jewish people are back in the land. Before when they were gone, when they were exiled, the land was laid desolate. But as they've come back into the land, we see the land flourishing and blessed. Come take a look at this. We have some of these bananas right here growing. They're ripe. I'm not gonna eat, uh, they're not ripe. I'm not gonna eat them now, but I'm gonna continue to show some of the amazing things here in the Holy Land. Be blessed out of Zion. Well, listen, friends, one thing, of course, that everybody knows about coming to the Holy Land is the sites, the biblical sites, the ancient things, the, the modern beauty of Israel as well. But a lot of things that people don't keep in mind is that some of the best food in the world is right here in the Holy Land. You have people from all over of Jewish background that came from all over the world and they bring their food here right to the land. So you have food from, the, from South America. You have food from the Middle East. You have food from Northern Europe, all different types of food. And then the local Arab population food. I'm gonna take you to check out one of the best bakeries in all of Israel called Abu Latia, run by an ancient Arab family right here from the old city of Jaffa. Next time you come to Israel, make sure you're ready to put on a few pounds. This is the sweet. Okay, okay, okay. All right, friends. Azatar pita. I'm burning my hands. It's so hot. Fresh from the oven. This was five shekels. Five shekels. That's so cheap. But I, my hands are burning. It looks so delicious. The flavor is just amazing. This is zatar, a spice that is local to here. It has sesame seeds, thyme, um, sumac. Sumac, which is a spice that's here that's a little sour with olive oil, and they put it on the fresh bread. Nothing like it in the world. A bit of salt. Taim meod. Hi, I'm Donna Holbrook, a National Executive Director of the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem, Canada. Audrey Ruth Peer was one of our members who came to know about the work of the ICJ in bringing comfort here. And she passed away as an only child and with no children of her own. She had two regrets in her life. One was that she didn't have children and the other one that she never came to the land of Israel. So when she passed away, she left an estate. I shared it with her friend, Pat, who knew her for over 60 years. And I said, Pat, what do you think Audrey would like? How we use her funds? So music was important to her. Children also important to her. And so we undertook the fund and we divided it four ways equally. 
and it went to a petting zoo for children, for orphan boys, near Tel Aviv. It also went to build two new music rooms at Bet Yosef up at Haifa, which is a very large community center. We also helped to complete a playground for another orphanage to the south of Israel. And then it enabled us to restore our scholarship for Christian young adults. And even though she was never in Israel, her name is in the land on those three projects, and it continued for five years on our Canadian scholarship for Christian leaders who have never been to Israel, who are in the age group of 17 to 30. Would you consider being a Shomer, Keep of Israel, in your state giving? And that, that leaves a wonderful legacy here in Israel. We conclude our program today with some sights and sounds within Israel. Thank you for joining us today, and be sure to visit our website at www.icejcanada.tv or call us at 1-866-324-9133. And for our Canadian residents, be sure to ask for your free Canada Israel pin. Through your contributions to ICEJ Canada, you can participate by giving to Haifa Home for Holocaust Survivors, Women at Risk Red Carpet Project, Operation Life Shield Bomb Proof Shelters, Mentoring Programs Aliyah Support, Children's Projects, Israel in Crisis, Israel Aid, Gan David Adam Emergency Services, Christian Friends of Yad Vashem, Scholarships for Young Adult Leaders, ICEJ Canada Media Fund, Gift Estate Securities Fund.